Well, over the next few days, I'm going to be doing quite a bit of hiking in some fairly remote places. So I've just stopped by Tesco's to pick up some supplies. I have got a load of drink, Fanta and water, some fruit, and then plenty of snacks, bread rolls, crisps, Kit Kats, of course, more water, and some chocolate. Should keep me going. Right, onwards. single track roads it's a dead end up here and hopefully there's a car park just before the dead end made it to the castle Sinclair Gurnigo there we go I'm gonna head onto the walking trail about 10 minutes walk down there I think and I'll tell you a little bit more about it if I can get through the gate here I'll tell you more about it en route a couple of good signposts here one for Noss Head which is where the lighthouse is over there in the distance and the other one here for the castle right this direction I can see it in the distance there that's where I'm heading down this trail and it's down there at the end, unmistakable. Right up ahead of me. It was not as far as I thought. It's maybe just five minutes walk. Try and get through here. Close the gate behind me. Oops. There we go. There we are. And I can see some scaffolding holding it all up. So there's the original castle dating back to the 13 and 1400s. And then you can see it expanding and getting larger, being restored, being rebuilt. And this is 1530 to 1610 now. And then the final version of the finished castle, I guess you could say 1610 to 1680. It was a massive castle and it was extremely secure because it was built, you can see, on all of those rocks down there. So getting to it was a feat in itself. There we go, up close now. So originally thought to be two castles. Gernigo Castle, built in the 1470s and then Sinclair Castle built in the 1700s but it is now believed I believe there is evidence that the two castles are actually one so what they thought was Sinclair Castle was actually modifications and extensions on the original castle Gernigo hence the name Sinclair Gernigo Castle Okay, let's see if we can get across this bridge. Yeah, it's open. I didn't think it was going to be open, but look at that. That is only just standing. And I'm about to walk underneath it. It's a sea stack out there. Amazing. Right, let's see what's actually in here. This stone here on the entrance was unveiled by Prince Charles on the 1st of August 2005 to commemorate the first phase of preservation works here. Wow, look at that. I don't know if that's original. I guess it must be. And then around here, I guess we're in one of the inner courtyards. As you can see, most of the castle now has been destroyed over a few centuries of weather 
can be some harsh winters up here in Scotland. Not to mention the incredible wind that you get up here on the coast. But look at that, I mean, that is just about standing. I would imagine that in years to come, there's a chance that may collapse as well, especially during storms. And what I like as well is that there's lots of info boards around, so it tells you a little bit about where I am now, the outer ward. I'll go and uh, take a walk a little bit further in, I think. But yeah, look at this out at sea here. This, by the way, is Sinclair Bay. It's an area that ships, when they're navigating the northern British Channel, I think it's called the Pentland Firth, when there's bad weather, it really is bad weather, and there's been many shipwrecks over the years up there, so when it is bad, rather than chancing their luck, they'll come and anchor here for a, a day or two to ride out the storms. Right, let's go and see what's over the other side there. Another very detailed signpost here. This is the Tower House and Inner Ward. And there's a picture of what it would have looked like. And I'm guessing this section here is what you're seeing right here in front of you now. Scaffold holding it up. And it looks really weathered, but it's still standing. That's the miracle here. What a piece of history. And there used to be a a timber bridge that crossed this little ravine. And what a view out to sea once again. There's the bridge that I used to get across here. The old wind is picking up and you can see an old trail that leads down towards that point near the rocks there where you can get up close and personal with those sea stacks. I was trying to figure out how to get down there, but I can't seem to figure it out. It does look a bit risky as well. It's very narrow getting out there. And those sea stacks, that's why I wanted to get down there to photograph the sea stacks. They are amazing. Mother nature at her best without a shadow of a doubt. They must have been formed over just hundreds of thousands of years, I would imagine. Goodness. And as I come round here, I was over there just a little while ago, over this part I should say, not in the sea. And this is the only area that I haven't been to. Let's just have a quick look to see what's down here. Wow, look at that. Proper entrance. And, ah yes, no, it is fenced off so you can't get in there. It's all being held up by steel supports. Same with this way, you can't get through there as a sudden drop and also I guess things are starting to fall apart, sadly. Look at this old concrete. My goodness, it looks hard. It looks like it's about to disappear over time as it probably has already with rain and storms that you get in this part of Scotland. Right, I'm gonna call it a day for this video. Wick has been amazing. There is so much to see on the NC500. Honestly, you could probably spend weeks and weeks and weeks, maybe a month, driving the circuit that is the NC500. But, as I said, gonna call it a day here. In the next video, I'm gonna be exploring John O'Groats and also Dunnett Head and the Duncanby stacks. If you like those stacks, as I do, the Duncanby ones are even more impressive, so I am told. But for now, I'll leave you with a view out at sea. Thanks very much for watching the video, as I said before, and I will see you in the next one. So many years.